thinking, I, I don't think, I think it's going to be 80% running on Saturday against USC, maybe even more. Now, if they get down, then, you know, we're going to have to see what, you know, I, I don't know how far, 14 points or something. Then, of course, Orgy is going to have to put it up in the air. But I, I think if what's going to bode well for Michigan and, and what they're going to try to do as they're going to try to run the ball 80, 90% of the time with Alex Orgy as the quarterback. That's what I think is going to happen. And I think you can be Sharon Moore and you can be a Michigan fan and you can say USC is a bunch of pretty boys that's just their offense and their defense. Sure, we saw what they did against LSU, but this is the Midwest and this is smash. And Michigan has hung their hat the last three years on being able to run the ball and come off the ball with an offensive line and smash you. That's what Michigan's going to do in this game. So a 90% run rate is what I think they're going to go with against USC. So, I mean, just, just one quick uh, point, and then we'll kind of jump to this, this topic as well. The, um, so, you know, I think, um, you know, if we're looking at um, what Michigan did last year, what Alabama did last year, and what Michigan could do this year, I guess we're talking about kind of like what we did in the Penn State game. Um, right. You know, per perhaps we're trying to replicate that for an entire game. Everybody knows what's coming, but we still are able to um, execute. Do you think that that might happen in a scenario where we have Mullings in there, we have Donovan Edwards in there, uh, we have Orgy in there at the same time, and maybe we we're, you know, we we have i don't think the playbook changes but maybe we're using different plays of the playbook maybe that's a better way to say it uh and, and we are running but we're actually trying to be as creative as possible with running and maybe some of the running is actually you know a 3 yard pass kind of scenario or something to that effect is is that um what might be in the cards as well yeah easy passes for Alex Orgy if he's going to throw it i wouldn't be surprised if they broke out Donovan Edwards on a pass here he might throw as many passes as uh, as Orgy, you know, get him in there. I go back and look to not, the, you know, the Penn State game. Sure, they ran 32 times. But even back in 21 when they won and they ran the ball with Hassan Haskins when they needed that drive seven straight times. And then they hit Eric All in a little drag and he went for a touchdown. I think about uh, this year, that first game against Fresno when Fresno finally scored the touchdown. Michigan came out, they ran the ball every time before they finally came out, and Warren was able to uh, hit Colston Loveland for a touchdown. That's what they're going to try to do. It's going to be it is going to be trying to shove it down their throat. And really, you know, it's not just because that's what Orgy does and he needs the confidence. I think this is their best route to victory. Their, their best players, and certainly Loveland would be there, and we don't know what his status is going to be, and, you know, I think you like Klein, but what you're talking about with Orgy is not, you're not going to be taking deep shots with him. They're coming out and they're saying, this is what we're going to do. We got Khalil Mullings and we've got Donovan Edwards and we're, we're playing smash. We're lining up. We're going to bring in an extra uh, offensive tackle and gentry, and we're going to run the ball and we're going to continue to do that. Now the thing can change is if USC gets up and, you know, but as long as Michigan is within striking distance, I think you're going to see a, a 1970s type approach with the Wolverines on Saturday. All right. I mean, I think, um, you know, maybe I can pivot a little bit to some of the numbers that you might uh, be looking for. You know, I, I, I think, you know, we had two interceptions per game on average in that first three games. Uh, our completion percentage is actually relatively high. You know, I think we were in the 60s uh, in terms of completion percentage, but lots of really, really short passes, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, the percentage of running plays, you already said 80 or 90 percent. Um, what do you think? I mean, do, do you think Alex Orgy, I'll, I'll put it this way. Do you think Alex Orgy should, I mean, I know he had that one long ball. You know, maybe we should throw it up and um, have our receivers flop or something and, and try to get a pass interference like a, like their soccer players. I don't know. Uh, do, do, what, no. what do you think of that kind of um, uh, at least keep, the defense honest to a certain degree by trying, at least trying to throw it uh, long. Uh, well, or do you I think, think the drawback there throw? is if he, if he, if he chucks one down there and it looks like it did on that one that he overshot, was it Fred Moore that he uh, mm -hmm. 
if he overshoots the receiver, it's going to drain his confidence. And so, no, I, I don't think, I mean, there's going to be some, uh, you know, can they scheme up a, a couple, whatever he does the best so he can get his feet set and he can launch a ball downfield, but he can do that. But if he's overshooting the guy by five yards, then that only makes USC feel like they're stronger. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess around with that. I think you're going to see some wide receiver screens. Uh, I have to see if he can throw the ball. I don't know. I, I don't feel confident now. I know that they've seen him in practice and Sharon Moore on Monday said, look, he's done it in the spring. He's done it in the fall. Talking about Orgy being able to uh, be involved in the passing game. So, but I'm going to have to see a little bit of that. But I, I think it's all going to be real safe stuff on Saturday. They got to think about his confidence and the the best path for Michigan to win is going to be just churning it out on the ground. You know, one thing about Davis Warren would be interesting if you didn't, if he wasn't pressured and he could just stand in the pocket, man, he could just sit back there. He was, he was throwing some darts. He threw some tremendous passes. The one the opposite hash to mm -hmm. Fred Moore seemed like mm -hmm. he had some chemistry with him. He had climbed down the field. Of course, you know, he was peppering uh, Colston Lovell in all three games. He looked pretty good there. If you give him a clean pocket and he can sit there, he's a pretty good quarterback. The thing is, is when you got to move your feet and then you got to be able to take care of the ball, that's where he fell apart. That's where the game was too fast for him. And it's like that for a lot of quarterbacks, especially ones that are, are getting involved in a big-time game like he was against Texas. But then you had last week, you can't – you got to rely on your fundamentals as a quarterback. This, this you know, it, it's great. I know a lot of the, that. That's what the young quarterbacks now want to do. They want to throw off the back of their feet. They want to sidearm. They want to run, throw a back against the green. You got to accomplish the the fundamentals before you start going all Patrick Mahomes or, or JJ McCarthy. And I think that was the thing with Warren when it came down to the turnovers. Great. In a clean pocket, you can just sit there, but you, you get him moved off a little bit, and then you know that deteriorated for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, or you know, let's say you know they're de designed rollout uh, kind of plays for Orgy. Does that make our? Is it our offensive line, or is it the quarterback that that can't you know maybe move in the pocket as well as you'd, you'd like uh, with respect to Warren? Uh, and one way to kind of um, uh, combat that, I suppose, is to have Orgy start to roll, start to go one way or another. Um, maybe he just, he has two choices, you know, maybe three at the top. Uh, uh, and, and it's basically passing in the same direction or running. And, um, you know, maybe that's the way, maybe that's the way to kind of overcome some of what might people might think of as uh, offensive issues you know offensive line issues i'm sorry yeah well i haven't seen him i went back to i haven't seen him in a real game do anything uh, passing the ball except those two nice touchdown passes he had he rolled out he had to put nice little touch a little five yard dump off passes donovan edwards in the first game and then what was it the hogan hansen uh, last game uh, he looked really good and that shouldn't be just cast aside that takes some touch that, you know, you, you have to be able to be deaf to deliver that. Some people say those are some of the toughest passes to throw, and you have to put the touch on that like he did there. I go back to the spring game and, and watch some of the throws. Like He came right out of the gate, and he was a little shaky in the spring game, but you know, he delivered some 15-yard outs standing in the pocket. To be a quarterback, we can start talking about rolling, you know, rolling the pocket, offensive line. He's going to have to have some measure of protection, but – to be a quarterback and to, to do anything in at, at any level, you have to be able to stand in the pocket and deliver the football downfield. He did a little bit of that in the spring game, like I said, with those 15-yard outs. That's what I think that they'll give him, some nice easy ones there. They will. I mean, I, it's so predictable where the first pass that he's going to throw is going to be a 10-yard screen to Samaj Morgan or to Tyler Morris, and then whoever's calling the game is going to say, yeah, you know, that's the – Give him a nice, easy one to get his confidence going. They all do that. That's what we're going to see. But then it's going to be, hey, when he has to deliver the ball in the pocket, I, I think, the, you know, I don't want to make it go overboard. So I'll put the first couple, at least the first, uh, you know, two or three passes. You know, he needs to 
it, it's going to be real important for him, not the one that he just swings out for a little, uh, you know, smoke screen or something. When he's delivering the ball down the field, the first two or three, it's really important that he has some success there. Uh, again, you know, if, if he's overshooting or he doesn't look, the, the groans from the crowd, that's going to work on his confidence. And then that's going to turn against him. And then just his overall confidence anyways, if he wasn't, you know, didn't have a million people watching him and 110,000 in the stands. Uh, having some early success for him is going to be huge in this one. Yeah, and I can't remember if you were talking with Scar or or uh, just talking on your own, <laughs> but but it was uh, you did mention uh, kind of Alex Orgy's uh, announce or you know you kind of talked about Alex Orgy kind of announcing that he's the quarterback at the beginning of the week versus uh, keeping it a secret. Uh, do you think that there's any real benefit or do you think it was a negative that they didn't keep it a secret and you know reveal that just before or just you know the first series of the game yeah i thought it should have been done again the, the week before they played fresno state so this was a month late in in doing this uh, the problem was is that with alex orgy you're running a complete almost completely different offense that you're going to do with davis warren and that's hurting the quarterback in the live game reps that you can have like this week in practice and then it also hurts the rest of the offense. I mean, if you're running stuff with Davis Warren, but now that he did it on a Monday, you know, the the weight of having USC, you know, have to prepare for him versus saying, Alex, you're our guy now, and we want to have this confidence in you. You're the starter. Uh, to me, it was a smart move. I thought that that's why Sharon Moore did it. He understands. I, I don't know if somebody said, look, man, you got you got to pick a guy. I wish you would have said the same thing, wh whoever it was going to be. If he thought Greg Crippen or if he thought it was going to be Ja Dees, that he would have said, this is who we're going to go with. We're going to go with Greg Crippen. They were both pretty close. Uh, I, I wish he would have done that the game week against uh, Fresno State, and he didn't. So he's played this out all the way to here. But I thought it was a confidence vote, and confidence is a huge thing, as I've been talking about for Alex Orgy on Saturday, especially some early confidence. So he's got the whole week. He can feel good about it. He didn't have to feel like they were going to go in. What were they going to do, compete again with Davis Warren having thrown all those picks? Were they going to go through yesterday and today not knowing who was going to be the starter and everybody wondering and everybody asking, like, hey, who's it going to be and everything else? I think those couple days you're doing the, at least the best you can right now to, you know, to form the offense around Alex Orgy come up with a game plan. Some of the things that we're talking about here, hey, rolling them out. Uh, let's, what, what are those? Uh, can we just script eight plays out? And we, can we just run those back? And what are those are going to be, be included? Well, we'll say the 10 plays because I think they're going to run eight or nine of those along, you know, with Alex Orgy running. And they'll just have one pass. And whatever that's going to be, that first one is going to be to Samaj Morgan. 